Hey, what's happening? Happy Halloween. Feliz Halloween. I'm Bex Carlos. This is Tutia Bruja. I have, there's like no excuse really. So I'm just going to be honest and say that I can't believe that the first year that I started this podcast, I had enough energy to release 33 episodes for all of October and the two days of Dia de los Muertos. And if that's something that surprises you as well, I I think that that really shows where I'm at now. I have always been the little engine that could when it came to creating. And I am just in this space where I am so mentally burnt out. And because of the horror that is capitalism, I always have to put the projects that pay me before my own. I have to make sure that I can survive. And because of that, I feel like sometimes for myself, I don't have a whole lot to give, especially this October. This October, this podcast, in addition to my very first gig that I had where I got to add on my occult resume, if you will, was I used to read uh, regularly at Fortune Teller Bar here in St. Louis. I actually recently read there for the first time in, in a bit, and it has new owners now. And if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, it's beautiful. This is something that I found out later because the old owners They named it Fortune Teller Bar because when they were working with the space, they had seen that there had been a sign previously there called Fortune Teller Bar. And so they were the second rendition. And I believe the first rendition was like in the 70s or 80s. It might have been further back than that. And I wish that if someone is a local historian of the St. Louis area and knows, please reach out, slide into my DMs, as they say, because I would love to learn more. But it is cool to know that I feel like that the energy is going to keep existing for a really long time. And I think that that's something that we don't talk about a lot in, you know, the metaphysical occult world is how buildings have their own like spirits, you know, because we talk about ancestors of the lands, but I also feel like ancestors of the building should be something that we commonly talk about too. And I think they're kind of, they can be interchanging because I do think that sometimes energies spirits stay in spaces, right? I mean, that's why things are haunted. And sometimes you can sort of like cleanse out the energy and not have it be so strong. And sometimes you can't. That's something that's been on my mind a lot because, you know, the energy of the building is very strong at that space. I was so glad to go back and read. And honestly, this October was so busy for me because I was approached. I also reached out to a lot of businesses to collaborate as well. And I'd been thinking a lot because In addition to Fortune Teller Bar, one of the places that I started reading at was Synergy Elixir Bar, and it's since closed, RIP. And here in St. Louis, we don't have the largest metaphysical community. You know, we have Fortune Teller Bar, which is amazing. We have Sincerely the Craft, also really dope. Uh, I used to read there. I used to be a house witch there. I highly recommend it. Amazing Black-owned, queer-owned shop. There's Mystic Valley. There was actually at one point in the whole like area, including they had some spaces out in like Collinsville and I think one in Alton too. They did like a a scavenger hunt of all the different occult shops. And I really would love to see more in this area. You know, there are so many people who are interested in the metaphysical who maybe don't feel like that community connection of like learning from other people. And I think that, you know, we are fortunate to have social media that helps us connect to witches all over the world. We really are. But I think like we need to be grateful. And I see so many people in a lot of spiritual groups that don't do any of their own research before they just like ask people. And I maybe this is just me and maybe I'm coming from a privileged place. But I feel like the most important thing about being a witch is you have to like be crafty and try and figure it out on your own. Does that mean you can't ask for help? Of course not. We all need guidance and to understand. And sometimes that comes in the form of resources and books 
or, you know, there are blogs, there are podcasts, there are all these different ways that we can get in touch with different magic practices. But I feel like you have to seek them out. Like you have to, it's like a relationship, right? Like you have to give it that 50% too. I recently told a friend that like is going through it that, you know, for October, there's so much abundance. Like every day in October, I have been telling myself like every day in October will be more abundant. And obviously we're at the last day, we're at 31. But even like financially, like the whole month has been pretty good. And I'm very grateful for like the abundance that I realize I have in my friendships, in my family, you know, um, in my sense of self. And like, I feel like I'm always make this a fat joke, if you will, but like closed mouths don't get fed, dude. And I feel like I have this hunger for life where I'm just like, I'm going to seek out the things that I want. Like, I'm going to seek out the things that I want that please me, that make me happy, that bring me joy, that make me feel sexy, that make me feel valued, that make me, you know, like life is too short not to, you know, I take every opportunity I can to travel. And I know that a lot of you out there are like, oh, you know, I just can't swing it or I can't make it work. Well, if you never make the efforts to travel, you're never going to do it. A lot of us have different vices and sometimes our funds go into that. And sometimes we have kids in a way those can be our vices. I'm kidding. But like we all have different things in our life that take up our money. And I feel like the one thing that we can do is we can start like they have like those big plastic drink bottles or, you know, baby bottles or whatever that are like banks. And you can put money in there and collect a few dollars here and there, even if you're taking a road trip somewhere. You know what I mean? That's still seeing something that you haven't been able to see. Travel has always been important to me, whether it's taking a road trip and spending a weekend, you know, somewhere in your own country, in your own state. Make travel a priority if that's always been something that you've wanted to do and you haven't been sure how. And I understand that right now is like financially difficult for everyone. We're all struggling. It's hard. I totally get it. But I think that sometimes if we don't make the initiative to create the plan moving forward, you know, like it just becomes more hard. And if you're saving like a few dollars here and there, when you decide to do something, that's going to help with the expense a little bit. So you're not just like having to come up with the money in the present. So something to think about. In addition to that, you know, like, Travel has been so important to me because it's allowed me to expand my brand and expand what I do, you know, like, and I don't want to say brand, like, you know, this is all about making money because it's not. I love connecting with people and doing tarot readings and hosting events and and having parties and connecting people. You know, a lot of my community has been online and I'm really grateful for a lot of the different events and people I've been able to meet because I was able to show up at different spaces and meet people. And I feel like community is one of those things that you have to have in person and online. So figure out ways that you can do that. If like in the next year, in the next few months, that's something that you're building towards. We had this time of radical change this year. We had seven different planets at one point that were all in retrograde. So I feel like it's not surprising maybe for me and a lot of you that on the other side, we're trying to change, we're trying to transform, we're trying to build lives that are more authentic to ourselves. And I am feeling that, you know, you know, I see the difference in what it's like to live here in the States versus what it's like to live in Mexico in a lot of ways. And the thing about the States that's a little challenging to accept for me is that so many people are just indoctrinated into a way of life that I worry we're never going to be able to change. I think that Americans especially have this, oh, woe is me, helpless me mentality. And I get it. It's hard to take on the day when you're like fighting with yourself internally. I'm a stressy and depressy bitch. I cause a lot of my own problems. I don't always know how to communicate with people or my delivery is bad. You know, when people don't explain things to me or I don't have a general understanding of what's going on, I get very overwhelmed and sometimes I like have a meltdown, you know, But I'm very connected to spirit and spirit's very important to me. And I feel because I make efforts to combine my magic with my daily practice and a lot of my efforts to like right the wrongs that my particular bloodline has created is how I am just trying to live in my truth. You know, right now we are seeing the horrors of what's happening in Palestine. And it's this reminder 
that it's very easy when you have no context into the world, how you can just take the truth that you've been given as fact. And I think that this ties to being a magic practitioner because you have to question the reality that we've been given and whether or not you're seeing it for its truth. You know, I feel like the conflict in the Middle East is very layered and there's a lot of different aspects that imperialism contributed to. I rewatched You're the Worst uh, in October because I just kind of needed something light. I say that and that show is so dark, but I needed this reminder that like, even if you are neurodivergent or just maybe someone who doesn't want to be blinded with things like Kardashians or just a lot of the things that are meant to distract us in life and no judgment. Like we all have things that like we, we take in to distract ourselves from the heaviness that is life, whatever, you know, but my point is, is that it's really hard when you get to a certain point, right? Like when you kind of see the world for what it is and you've healed a lot and you understand a lot of things to like be okay with people who haven't even started that journey. And, you know, I'm very fortunate that like I walk really heavy with my ancestors. And because of that, I get all these signs all the time that like, you know, I'm where I'm supposed to be at in the moment that I'm there, you know, and that's a very powerful feeling. And sometimes we walk around lost, like we have no idea what's happening. And like, because we're not to like the finger quote destination we're trying to get to. And I think the thing that I remind myself is that like, that's a very colonized way of seeing the world. And we have to live very presently in the moment, enjoying the journey and taking power in what we can. And so this is a reminder that like, we are all trying to navigate how we can contribute to the world in a way that isn't performative. And, you know, it's a lot of us are trying to boycott and no longer give our money to organizations that are siding with political opinions or beliefs that we do not agree with. It's calling our representatives. It's emailing our representatives if phone calls make you uncomfortable. It's donating money to organizations and entities that are are doing work to help. It's starting conversations because that is one of the, the great things about social media, right? Like we can all go and bully Elon Musk to provide internet for the people who right now have no way of like having their voices heard. We have more power than we think. Um, I want to also suggest Friends of the Show, um, Unpacking the Eerie, did an episode that I'm going to link in the show notes about denouncing genocide um, because we should all stand up when there are horrors in the world happening. I also want to point out that like if there is a community center or um, – Palestinian organizers that are are speaking out in the midst of their own tragedies, um, please support them. This comes from Wikipedia because I was not aware. There are uh, 255,000 roughly Palestinians in the United States. Um, in Mexico, that is also very near and dear to my heart, obviously, um, there are 13,000, you know, and there's a whole list of how many people, because it's still very horrible for the family members you know, to have to see what their family members are going through. We can support them. You know, we, we can help each other in different ways. And I just really want to remind you that you are not small. You are a witch. You are a bruja. You are a magic practitioner. You are powerful. I'm really fortunate here in St. Louis that I have a lot of friends who are very political and are very active in trying to make change. And the proceeds um, from a show tonight at Off Broadway which is like a Halloween cover show is going to assist the Gaza Children's Fund. But that's one thing, you know, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can support Palestinian business. I believe here there's a list on STL Activist sharing all the different resources and businesses. And there's really great comments of all the different places that you can support that are Palestinian if that is important to you. And it's important to a lot of us right now. You know, times feel really heavy right now. And how can they not? But I want to remind everyone that we have so much more power within ourselves than we think. We have so much more power within community than we think. And to quote Loretta Ledesma, also known as the Death Witch, take it to your altar. You know, when you feel helpless about what's going on in the world, like pray about it, meditate on it, manifest on it, just 
figure out a way that you can help and bring joy to other people when it feels so hard. You know, I didn't want to get preachy. I think maybe that's a reason I've been holding off. I've been sharing like and doing what I can, like reaching out to my representatives and my senators and just trying to not feel so small in a really scary time. I do also want to stress something that I've learned at just sort of as a way to close out. I've realized that Halloween is so important to me because when I was growing up, I was always really interested in the macabre and I had this sense of just like death not feeling so scary a lot of the time, you know, and I think Halloween was the only time where, you know, you could be a little silly with spirit and be a little silly and dress up. You know, we have our Irish comrades to thank for that because when a lot of Irish immigrants came to the United States, they brought with them the traditions of Samhain. And so that later sort of became and evolved and became more so Halloween. And so uh, love the Irish. Shout out to y'all. But Halloween in being, you know, Mexican-American and the fact that like death is so normalized in Mexico, but all of Latin America, like it just didn't make me feel so weird. You know, Primer Impacto reminded me that like, yeah, there's death all the time, but there's also a lot of spirits. So always be aware of that. And, you know, I also loved witches because like, I remember being a little kid and watching Hocus Pocus and it was like one of those weekends where Disney, because I don't know if you remember this, right? But like all of the different like squiggly, almost like lines on the channels that you didn't have and having that little box where you had to switch between A and B. Disney Channel on this particular weekend was offering a free weekend. And it was like we at a certain time on this particular like Halloween, we had like been carving pumpkins and we put it to that channel and it had just started and it just felt so faded. And even as a little kid, It felt like a sign, you know, and I think that that's why to this day, 33 year old me, you know, believes in signs and that the universe does give us information. Our ancestors give us information to remind us that we're on the right path. And, you know, if you have a strong intuition, if you have a strong sense of self, like stop doubting yourself. Like I think sometimes our minds, even if it's not the universe, right? Like maybe it's our own minds just making it happen because it knows that we need it. Like you're a lot more powerful than you think. So why wouldn't you be able to change the world? You know, go back to that younger you that loved Halloween probably more than you do now as an adult with a disposable income and really think about like, if I could make these things happen and change who I was for a whole day and like live in that imagination fantasy world, I can do that as an adult, as someone who has power, who can create change. I hope you leave this Halloween episode feeling like empowered and inspired instead of hopeless and and sad and like you have no power in the world. You know, do something, connect with people, create art about it. I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being on this journey with me. And I want to say thank you to all my patrons. Um, I did a ghost face inspired slumber party shoot with my friends and y'all helped make that happen. All the photos are on my Patreon. And yeah, I just would really love to connect. And I'm just really glad for the fact that y'all helped me create art. Um, I'm grateful. Thank you for supporting and listening to this podcast. If this is something that's resonated with you, please write a review, share it with a friend. I appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Bye. Yeah, yeah.